What's going on, everyone? It's RGB Tech back here again. In today's video, we're taking a look at the brand new version of the PS2 emulator for Android, Nether SX2 Classic 2.0, which might just be the comeback Ether SX2 fans have been waiting for. It's been over a year since Ether SX2 disappeared from the Google Play Store, leaving PS2 emulator fans wondering if we'd ever see a proper replacement. This isn't just a random fork, it's a serious revival of the emulator we all loved, with updated patches, new features, and even a fix that stops the Play Store from overwriting your install with older builds. So in today's video, I'll walk you through the full setup, test out some classic PS2 games, and show you exactly what Nether SX2 brings to the table. So right now, Nether SX2 Classic 2.0 is in a pre-release state and still experimental. The devs have already made some bug fixes, added improvements, and even included a few new features. I've already installed Nether SX2 on this phone. Right now, I'm using the Infinix Note 50X, powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 7300 Ultimate with a Mali G61 theme two-core GPU. It also comes with eight gigs of RAM. So I'll close everything in the background and let's get started. Open Nether SX2, and here we are on the welcome screen. Tap next, read the instructions, then tap next again. Now we're in the settings section, and you'll need to configure a few things based on your device. If you're using a high-end device like the Snapdragon 845 or higher or equivalent, choose the optimal safe defaults option. Dimensity 7300 sits between the Snapdragon 860 and 870, so it's safe to go with this setting. But if you're on a low-end device, then go for fast unsafe defaults for better performance. Now, enable expand to cutout area to get full screen support on devices with a notch. Set the emulation screen orientation to landscape and the aspect ratio to stretch to fill screen. You can also choose your preferred UI language and theme here. Under GPU renderer, select Vulkan if your device supports it. Otherwise, go with OpenGL, which works better on some phones. Next, set the upscale multiplier based on your preference. By default, it's set to 1x native resolution. Increasing it improves graphics quality, while lowering it boosts performance but reduces visual quality. That's it for the settings, now tap next. Here, you'll need to import the PS2 BIOS, which is required to run games. Tap Import BIOS. I've imported the US BIOS file, but you can also use the Japan or Europe versions if you prefer. Most of them work the same. Tap next again. Now it's time to import your game directory path, basically the folder where you've copied your PS2 ROMs. Select the folder, and once the path is assigned, tap next. That's it, the setup is complete. Now tap finish. It'll now scan the path. And these are the ROMs I've imported. This emulator supports multiple formats, including ISO, BIN, or CHD files. It also shows the region of each game. You can switch between grid view or list view, but right now it looks like the cover art isn't showing up. No worries, just select the ROM, tap choose cover image, and you can manually set it. And that's it. We're all set up and ready to play. Anyways, let's go over to the options section. Here, you'll find tabs like playlists, executables, app settings, and many other options. Let's go into app settings. Under general settings, you can enable options like show FPS meter, CPU usage stats, and GPU usage if you want to monitor your device's performance. Now go to the system section. Under EE cycle rate underclocking, set it to 50%. For cycle skip, set it to maximum underclock to avoid performance issues. Make sure multi-threaded VU1 is enabled. Also enable frame limit. This helps the emulator run as fast as possible while delivering better FPS. You can also control the FPS settings for both NTSC and PAL. By default, some games run at 60 Hz, while others run at 30 Hz. I recommend setting both to 30 for smoother and more stable performance. Now head to the graphics section. As we said earlier, keep the renderer on Vulkan. Set the upscale multiplier to 1x native, or even lower if you want more performance. For better visuals, you can go above 2 to 4x, which is more than enough on high-end devices. Also, enable widescreen patches, which automatically applies the 16 by 9 aspect ratio to supported games. In the audio section, set the interpolation mode to linear for cleaner audio output. And that's it, guys. These are the best recommended settings. They've also added a retro achievements option. 
When enabled, the emulator will scan for achievements on startup, just like on the original PlayStation experience. You can even set custom settings for each individual game ROM. Just tap on a game, go to properties, and from there you can tweak its specific settings. All right, guys, now it's time for the test. But before we jump into the games, let's first check if the PS2 BIOS is working properly or not. Okay, it's fine. You can also see the system configuration, PS version information. Now, let's test out some games. By defeating Ares. As you can see, we're getting pretty stable FPS performance overall. Also, just a quick note, this emulator runs perfectly fine on 64-bit devices, especially if your GPU supports the Vulkan driver, or else you need to consider the OpenGL. If you're using a MediaTek Helio G80 or higher, or something like the Snapdragon 680, it still runs well. Just make sure to keep some settings and the scaling settings low for smoother FPS. So yeah, Nether SX2 Classic V2.0 is a solid comeback for PS2 emulation on Android. It runs well, has great features, and supports a wide range of devices. If you found this useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe us for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.